What is up, everybody? It's your boy Slim, aka Mr. Different of TBOSounds.com, and we're back with another video. Today, we're going to be looking at the Tory Lanez type beat that I made and breaking it down. Sorry, guys. Um, I know I'm a little late. I was supposed to do a beat review this Wednesday, but I forgot. I was sick. And I woke up late and I slept all day. I'm sorry. So, but I will be doing one later on this week, probably Friday. I'll do it Friday for you guys. That was my apologies. I do apologize for everybody who was looking forward to that and that did not happen. So I do apologize for that. But anyway, we're gonna look at this Toro Lane type beat right now today because you got people asked me to break it down. It's been about a day or two since I released it. So let's break it down. Now I won't go ahead and say that this is not exactly how Tory Lanez will make a beat. This is just my spin on Tory Lanez. I just did my own thing to it. I kind of got inspiration from I think the song's called Other Side and Blow. If you heard about Tory Lanez, Tory Lanez like he's growing. I like his style of uh, music. I like his vocal style. I might be doing a vocal tutorial for him. If you guys want to see a vocal tutorial of Tory Lanez, smash that like button, give me 100 likes, and I will be doing a vocal processing um, video for Tory Lanez. But anyway, we're going to jump into how I break down this beat and play it for you and show you what I did. But remember, it's very simple. It's not the best beat I ever made. I'll go ahead and admit that. But once again, I like the style of it. It's very simple and very smooth. And you can really, you know, I think the vocal production when you're doing um, the vocals will really stand out in this beat. And that's the whole emphasis on this track. So let's play it and then let's break it down. See, like I said, it gets kind of a lot of inspiration from like Blow. Um, I think that's one of his first big singles, um, I'm not mistaken. But yeah, that's what it kind of gets inspiration from. Very simple, very, you know, kind of angry sounding, very aggressive sounding. But like I said, overall, the beat is super simple. That's where I wanted to keep it because I said, when you put the vocals on, the vocals are what you want to shine. It ain't about having crazy chord progressions and all that crazy mess. You can keep it simple and still make a beat sound hard and full at the same time. So let's go ahead and break this bad boy down and break it down. So, First off, I'm going to start with the choir part that I started with. If I'm not mistaken, this is an Omnisphere patch. So we're going to see if I'm right or wrong, which as long as it's, how long it's taking to up, come up, I think it is an Omnisphere patch. So we're going to see what it is. All right, so come up. There we go. Uh, yeah, and it's the boy choir. As usual, um, people said I don't be showing my um, chords. So I'll show you the chords so you guys can see. Because a lot of guys want to see the notes, which really doesn't make a difference. Because unless you want to just copy my beat completely. That's why I don't show you the chords I use. But since you want to see the chords I use, here you go. So we have an F sharp chord. It's just a F, uh, it is a C sharp ma uh, minor chord, as you can see. Very simple, nothing spectacular there. Um, let me get my MIDI keyboard so you guys can hear me actually play it. Because, yeah. But yeah, I just kind of played it by ear. No, very simple. Uh, what I did do to it was added some gross beats to it to make it slow down, slow it down a little bit. And then I also used some filtering on the uh, EQ2, which is amazing, which I did about 2K and about around 150K low pass and high pass filter, just kind of focus it in. Like I said, I used the uh, slow triplets, not slow triplets, but one has speed inside of gross beats because hell, gross beats is amazing, right? So that's that for the, um, the choir, you know, to get that. And 
It gets kind of that dark, very angry, very moody type of sound that you hear in like a Tory Lanez type of track, you know. So there's that. All right, next is the keys. Um, the piano keys. Now, this is kind of one of the the weird ones because I wanted to make it sound kind of like I wanted to sound off beat on purpose. A lot of people were like, I got a lot of complaints from other producers. Like I said, fuck what other producers say. If y'all watch my video, I'll link it in the video up in here somewhere. You can click that. But I made a video called Fuck What Producers Think. Not saying fuck you guys or anything. I'm just saying, you know, I don't care what you think. But I meant to make it offbeat and off timing for a reason because I wanted that kind of broken, weird, unedged, you know, kind of feeling to it. So I made sure all, I slid all the notes over and they're not quantized at all. Like I could quantize it by hitting Alt-Q. And I make it sound like this. But that one's still off. You know, but I didn't do that. I decided to, if we go back, let's see, undo, undo. I made it sound like this instead. You see how it just—it sounds like you know the person who's playing it is not is like got problem with their hands or something like that. You know they're having trouble playing the piano. That's the kind of vibe I want to go for. That kind of you know, kind of lost, kind of don't know what they're doing type of sound. So I easy way to do that is you play your beat, you quantize it, and I went individually and I held the Alt button and I just slid my notes over. As you can see, you can slide them over without snapping. I just slid them over a little bit just to kind of give that kind of kind of broken feel to it. So that's what I did there. So before anybody complains and be like, ooh, the slim is off tempo, it's not on beat, I made it that way on purpose. I can do that, you know, it's my beat. Um, anyway, I used the, I think, an Omnisphere. No, I actually used the Alicia Keys from Contact. Very good piano sound. I like it. That was a very good piano sound. And then I just added my studio... Um, Sweet classic verb, and I use the the Bacrasti. I think it's called the Bacrasti M7 or something like that. Um, the Bacrasti um, reverb, which is a very popular reverb. Look it up; it's amazing reverb, digital reverb. And I just had a little bit of concert hall. You can use any. You can use any reverb. Just it has like a big hall or concert hall, or cathedral sound to it, and just make it sound really wild. Without it, it sounds kind of dry. Let me show you an example of what it sounds like without the reverb. Sounds boring. Add a reverb to it. You know, and the, remember the better reverb plugin you have, the better the sound will be at the end. But then you can use that fruity reverb if you want to, or whatever. But I use mine from Slate Digital because I like the reverb. It's like best, it's one of the best reverbs I own next to um Valhalla Reverb, which Valhalla Reverb is like a second compared to this one. Anyway, then I go to the 808, which is from Space Sauce Volume 1, the 808 Nebula. So you can purchase that at tbosounds.com. And Space Sauce Volume 2 is coming up at the end of this month. So be on the lookout for that. But anyway, just simple little 808, nothing special. Got kind of that, like I said, got kind of that blow type of 808 sound. And what I did to it is add some decapitator to it. Just to kind of, you know, give it that that little bit of um edge there. Nothing special in that note. Drive three EMI setting at about 70% wetness, uh, wet dry to kind of make sure it ain't that strong. Without it, it sounds, it still sounds good without it, but you know, that added, the little bit extra distortion or saturation or whatever you want to call it does sound good. Just brings up the bottom end a little bit of it. Next up, we got these two claps, which are layered. One's a trap snare, um, which is just a regular snare. Regular trap snare. Then we had this reverb -y snare. That's that. And I just didn't really do nothing to it. I just kind of added them in there and just blend them together because this clap, the snare already had like a nice big open reverb sound. So I just blended with a more, more dry sounding one. You know, and together it gives the kind of reverb tail. You know, 
Snare is a little bit loud, but it sounds really good. You know, I always I always blend in two claps and two snares. I always layer my claps and snares. That's just that's just how I operate, you know, but you don't have to do that. Next up is the hi hat. The hi hat is a very simple hi hat. Nothing special. I don't think I added no effects to it or anything like that. I kept it simple and panned it to the right. And just had like a very repetitive rhythm because like I said, it's not really about the beat. The beat, I don't want the beat to be too crazy in this song. I wanted the vocal, the production. Like when you do the vocals on here, the vocals really stand out. So you have to make it less com less complicated so the vocals is better. Like people are making these super complicated beats and then you can't really fit no vocals on it because it's doing all these crazy pitch bends and 808 slams and all this goofy nonsense you don't need in the beat. But that's how you guys do, but I don't. I keep it simple. Next up is the kick. And y'all know how I process my kicks, right? If you don't know, I always do a little EQ to it, cut the lows of it, about 60 hertz in this case. I ran through a compressor, any compressor. This is my favorite compressor to use um, because it's simple and the reason I like this compressor is because you really have to listen to what you're doing. It don't have no visual aids, but the gain reduction. So every every move you make, you have to listen to what the compressor is doing to the sound. So without the compressor, it sounds like add a little bit of that thump to it, a little bit of knock, more knock to it. And then we have, like I said, we have a um, decapitator because I distort my uh, kick. But I always bring the mix down like 40%. And the drive pretty high, it's just to kind of you know pretty low drive or medium drive to about a low mix, because too much would just sound crappy. That's unusable. But then you bring it down here, you want just a little bit of that that roundness. I, I love that right there. It just that just sounds so good. And that's why I do with all my kicks, you know. So but you can do that. Next, I had this cool like little flanger open hi hat open cymbal. Don't think there's no effects on it. But you can do this with any symbol. You just add a, a, a open hi hat and add a flanger to it, a flanger, whatever you want to call it, and it gives it that kind of rippling effect and add a little reverb and delay. But this has already been processed, so I ain't gotta do that. Next, I ordered. I, added, I ordered. <laughs> added this little live loop. Um, I just added it in there, and then I slowed it down. I think I set the timing to about two beats, if I'm not mistaken. Two, yeah, two beats, I think. No, four beats. Make kind of like, make kind of like a stomp, kind of like like a like a like a. I wanted to go for like a, a grandfather clock type of sound, so that's what I did right there. So you know, that's what I did in that situation right there. <laughs> so yeah, there's that. Next up, I ordered another choir. But I think this one's actually a choir pad sound. I think I actually made this choir into a pad. We're gonna see and find out for you guys. Like I said, I think it's another Omnisphere patch, like always, because you know, Omnisphere is just that dope, I guess. Yeah. Actually, it's a it's a pad, but let me just put pad. Why is that late name choir? That's weird. Anyway, but yes, yeah, it's just a. And it's kind of layers with the um the choir up here, so. Nothing special, but I did add a little bit of low cut, but I left the highs alone. Usually I cut the highs, but in this case, I wanted the highs to be there, because I, I feel like it wasn't, there wasn't enough high content, uh, high, high frequency content in my beat. So I decided I'll just leave the highs alone this time. And it worked pretty out, pretty, it worked pretty well once you blend it in there, pretty nice when you mix it in there. It turned out very well. Then I made my ARP. And I'm just going to go and say, you know what it is. It's Space Sauce Volume 1. It's the Eerie preset. It's my signature ARP. If you don't like it, you can get No, it ain't. Actually, I take that back. It's not. It's actually an Omnisphere patch. I lied. Yes, I lied. I'm not using the my usual ARP. I'm using an Omnisphere patch called Rough Device. I forgot. I changed it up. Then I added Tremolo and Pan Man. But this is what it sounds like without these effects, though, so you can hear what it sounds like. Oh, it's pretty. Sounds gross. <laughs> Sounds super gross. Um, then I just added some Pan Man and Tremolo to give it kind of that effect. And remember, you can use um, the gate effect inside of Gross Beats plus, um, I think it's Love Filter, Fruity Love Filter, and you can get the same effect 
without having these two plugins. But I like these two plugins because they have a little bit more extra features in them than other stuff. You know what I'm saying? You can smooth it out. You can do some crazy stuff. You can shuffle it, make it swing. You can change the rate. You can do a lot of detailed stuff. And it also syncs the tempo too, which is, you know, half not half bad. So, yeah. But anyway, when you add that to it, you get... Get a cool art style. You get a, a different type of art. So you, you, I like these plugins and doing this type of thing because you could take one generic art that everybody uses, add process a little bit, and have you a completely new art that nobody else has. So just experiment with your arts. I know a lot of people like put their arts on and leave the arts by themselves. Process your arts. Your arts are instruments too. You can get some amazing effects, especially you got, you got the same repetitive arts like in Nexus and all that. You can definitely get some better sounds by using this. And then that's pretty much it. And then I added a Vox right here, which is just a simple Vox, which you can hear right here. Yeah. Nothing special. I don't even know where I found that Vox, but I found it. Say, hey, it, sound, it sounds like some Tory Lane stuff, I guess. You know, that's in my opinion. They say it may not be exactly, but it sounds like that. Um, my bus, my mix bus is simple. I always use some um, some bus compression, a little imaging, a little tape machine, and then the limiter. Um, I'm going to make a video that really goes in depth and why I do all this for my mix bus because a lot of people can ask me, make a mix tutorial slim, make a mix tutorial. I will make a mix tutorial for you guys because I actually have a beat that I'm working on right now that has vocals on it. And we're doing a whole mixing of vocals to a beat and show you guys the whole process of mixing and mastering a song, a complete song. So don't worry, I'm working on it. I will get it and you guys will be very satisfied. I promise you, you will love me and you know, you'd be happy. But yeah, that's pretty much it there. And um, also, I'm gonna talk about this little plugin that I want to show you guys. It's the free K meter. I'm gonna uh, talk about it. I'm making a video about it. It's gonna be a new series called Free Plugin of the Week, and this is gonna be the free plugin I want to talk about this week, which you guys will love because I already talked about this bad boy right here, mixing in mono. So the Panemulator. Watch another video I made that. I'm gonna tell you about the K meter. But anyway, overall, that's how the beat sound like. I played it before and after mixing the master, so you can hear what it sound like without mastering, and then with it. So we'll just start right here where all the sounds are. Now, yes, it gets louder, but overall, the beat gets tighter, more open, more you know, all the the low end frequency gets more like tighter because in mono and everything like that and it works out better but so i'm gonna make a full in-depth video about that and also i did put a gross beats little right here or glitched that's a glitch too but you can use gross beats i made a video about that as well of how to do a tape stop effect because you guys love that but yeah that's pretty much it right there um very simple beat the beat's not crazy difficult it's just very very simple and a lot of people think, you know, you have to be crazy with beats, and it's not, you don't. Sometimes you can be very simple and still get a nice sounding beat. You know, like I said, if it's simple and it's clean, the vocalist can really shine and do some crazy vocal production and make some good music with it. So, yeah, that's that. Um, so, yeah, if you got any questions about the beat, ask me about it. Uh, if you want to see a Tory Lanez vocal processing video, let me know. I will show you I will show you how to get that not yeah Tory Lanez type of um, vocal effect. I'll show you that. And also be looking out for the mixing and mastering tutorial that's coming up real soon, how to mix and master a full song for you guys. So with that being said, y'all know who it is. It's your boy Slim, a.k.a. Miss Different of TBLSounds.com. Not motivated by money, but like, comment, subscribe, and views. Hope you guys enjoy it like always. If you have any more requests, let me know. I'll put them in my agenda, but I've been doing some research, and I'm going to show you guys how to really grow yourself and your channel. If you want to know how to grow your channel, your YouTube channel, I would definitely – be happy to show you guys how to do that, no problem. Just let me know in the comments below and give me a thumbs up and like in this video. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy like always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one, everybody.